Good evening, it's February 16th, 2024, and welcome to another one of our Branches on the Vine with the, uh, with the Bible Project, of course, and the Sermon on the Mount series. So, my brother, Jim Wern, and, well, well we, we were talking, so he and I decided to uh, take a peek at these videos, and then we're going to chat about them. So, on the week that we release our vids, right, uh, we're going to do them in two episodes. The first usually on a Thursday, it's going to cover my comments and my thoughts on the ideas that Tim, John, and those wonderful folks at the Bible Project, they put together for us, yeah? On the day after, it's usually going to be on a Friday, I'm going to have my discussion with my cool brother, Jim Wern, and we're going to bounce around ideas and thoughts that we have. So, welcome this evening to our discussion of Episode 2 of the Sermon on the Mount. This is who the Kingdom of God is starts with this evening on the dusty feet and before we forget if you find these kinds of podcasts useful it's when you click the subscribe button the reminders they just help you but also if you think these might be useful to others that's when you click that like button because that is the way that YouTube chooses to share these to more people, if they wish. So this sermon, again, it's found in Matthew 5-7. through And for me, it's that seminal moment in the teachings of Jesus. This is his longest, deepest, widest teaching that we have recorded in Scripture. And it covers things that, uh, well, for sure, um, we do love to talk about, yet deep down, I think we really have challenges wanting to live it. So, tonight, Sermon on the Mount. This is who the Kingdom of God starts with. And that includes the two of us. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> couple of nobodies, just like he talks about in the series. That's it. Just a, a couple of nobodies. I, I make that point, I, I talk about that often on here, is that... Uh, um, uh, I'm that I'm that that person in the field. I'm the farmer. I'm not that. Yeah, just another guy. So there you mm -hmm. go. Okay. So that said, uh, what stood out? So everybody already saw what I said last night. So um, what points jumped out at you that are worthy of chat? Well, I think to start with, I loved. Again, the reiteration, as they talked about last week, uh, or last time, uh, that Jesus was talking to, as they put it, a crowd of nobodies. Mm. And the significance of that uh, for us today, you know, it's just average Joe kind of thing. But I think for them too, uh, the we tend to gravitate or think that things will go better and the gospel being one of those if it's put in the hands of powerful people famous people influential people mm -hmm. and god has always used nobodies all the way back as far back as scripture goes it was just average people mm -hmm. and i loved that that's who jesus addressed in as you said his most significant message. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's in interesting. We have in scripture going through this. We have. I I'll agree. They're they're um, nobodies, but in a sense, uh, I'll, I'll will you say Abraham as an example? I, I just yeah. got kind of want to go there with this. Is that there was they were people that were doing the best that they could and knew how mm -hmm. and god said i find favor with them yeah and then we get what what we get so i would say that they weren't say famous at the time or anything or, or any, any of that kind of stuff we know that abraham was was um decently living with his dad mm -hmm. they hadn't parted yet but he was definitely going to be the inheritance that 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 w went with his dad's deal um uh, but but I'll agree that we have a lot of people in there that that are picked or chosen that yeah. we wouldn't expect. Go back to somebody as simple as say King David, the the runt of the litter, yeah. so, so to speak. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah it's those those people and then he then he can do what he chooses to, to do you know right um you know we have uh um moses is another story you know that that is interesting um but yeah the point that that he's he's talking to the everyday people here he's talking to everyday people that are living what their life is in everyday life i'd say a bit more press than ours is mm -hmm. for sure yeah um but well and and, no and i think as you were talking all of a sudden it's, it's it was sinking in nobody's has a negative connotation yes it's like to me it was they were more like anybody's and oh, everybody's ooh, great you know? choice both of those down. You know, he, he spoke to the anybody's of the world. He spoke to the everybody's of the world. I like that the group, anybody's and everybody's. Great, great work choice, you, James. When you look at, I mean, even just the way they decided to illustrate it, you know, the crowd that was there, it was a little bit everybody. There was a religious leader in there as part mm -hmm. of the crowd who mm -hmm. was a quote unquote somebody, you know, mm -hmm. at the time. So it really was everybody. It wasn't isolated to one group other than he was talking to the people of Israel. That right. was his audience right. that was mixed right. in that regard. Right. And you you talked before we went on air here uh, about the the tie-in to the other mountain sermon-ish experience mm -hmm. way back when. And I loved that uh, the way uh, Tim and John were talking about um, these Israelites and really the, the fulfillment of the covenant that they mm -hmm. are still part of that covenant people. Yeah. And, and, and they needed to be reminded of that, you know, cause it's, it was easy to, to forget. Mm -hmm. They had gone so far away from, I believe, a, you know, a lot of the ways, especially the religious leaders away from what that original covenant covenant was supposed to be. And we'll get to that toward the end there. But I love that it was that tie in that, and really the Israelites again were just a part of everybody. You know, they were part of the living people at the time. And God said, I'm going to pick a people who are going to be my expression, my example. Um, and then as we find out, even in the uh, Sermon on the Mount series, that doesn't come without a cost. Mm -hmm. There's great blessing involved, but there's also great cost. Mm -hmm. Um, you, uh, so yeah, you caught the, uh, the, the fact, and I'll take this. He's talking to the children of Israel again, par paralleling the two. And I talked about yesterday, but the, 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 the paralleling of the two and what you, what you end up getting is, and you use the word there, there, he's re he's reminding them. Okay. The, they were established. I'll bite at the first one. That was their establishment. He's going, okay, we're setting up. And God's words in that, he was setting up his kingdom in the land, right? So we have God's kingdom set up in the land. And then he gave it to them to run. And I'm going to take that back because I chose to use the word differently in there yesterday. I'm going to say it mm -hmm. because I say our, us, I want to post this. So he gave it to us to run and we didn't do a good job. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... But in that, you're, and you used a good term, they lost their way. Okay, so yeah. they're being r reminded of that again because they lost their way. And they were, um, he was reminding them of who they were, that promise. They're, they're, it's all based on that promise. If the promise is, I'm, uh, that promise doesn't count anymore, then why are we having this meeting? It's the truth. Mm -hmm. Rather than going, let me remind you of the promise I made. I'm still tied to this. This is still yeah. critical to me. So then, you're right. But like the teachers of the day had been, and mm -hmm. Jimmy, very very good point on that, that, that they thought they were somebodies. So mm -hmm. that, that's an important piece that we'll get there eventually too on those. Is that they lost that part of the covenant and paul gets there big in, in his deals but we get the point of it's gonna get bigger i mentioned this it's gonna get bigger broader wider than anybody anticipated because it's going to yeah. include more than just you the religious leaders there had become very um isolationist yeah mm -hmm. it's only only for us so much so that they had brethren like the samaritans that are related but isolated yeah mm -hmm. they pushed out and 
we we see through Jesus's example that that's changing. Yeah. And so, yes, with this point, that's just it. It's getting bigger, but you can't, that, that underlying piece is still there. Yeah. 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 Yep. Definitely. And I think as he, as he begins to, to roll as, as John and, and Tim start talking about talking through the blessed are the, and I love the way they kind of rephrased, you know, didn't, uh, spoke them differently than what our traditional, you know, how we look at it. Mm -hmm. Um, they even said, you know, we can talk about kingdom of heaven. He, the way they phrased it was the kingdom of the skies, which is a very literal translation. Mm -hmm. Um, and we put into it what that we think that represents right. but what i loved was um as they look at the kingdom of the skies as that that was something that was beyond them but not unreachable uh and you and i talked about this earlier that when we think of heaven we think of that thing that's way out there way beyond but mm -hmm. the sky doesn't i mean now we're flying in the sky back then they didn't fly mm -hmm. and nowadays we go the skies yeah that's easily attainable yeah. um but it was something that meant was meant to give um, a believable hope mm -hmm. that this is this is possible, mm -hmm. and then they start going through each of the blesseds. You know, blessed are those who grieve for sorrow; your sorrow will turn to joy. Mm -hmm. uh, blessed are the unimportant, for soon, I love the way they said it. Those roles will be reversed, mm -hmm. and this is what God originally intended at the first covenant. Mm -hmm. There were other people groups that lived in the world. Mm -hmm. There were other people groups who had other gods. And our God was saying, I want you to live in a way that's different from yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Not superior. Different. Not not in, in a way that, that makes you better than them, but differently. And mm -hmm. what does that different look like? Yeah. And he's kind of showing some of those examples here. Yeah, the, um, that... I guess it goes back to the first covenant where God says, and he's telling Moses and Moses is sharing this through is that it is, is what you're doing so high in the heavens that we have to send somebody up to get it, come down and tell us. And he says, no, is it so far away over the chaotic waters and no to somebody that come back. No, it's right here in, in, in your grasp. Um, the kingdom of heaven, we, and we see this through scripture too, is that it equates to God's want. Okay, here, this kingdom of heaven brought here on earth, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, so we, we see this um, repetitive pattern that, that we want that this set up. Um, mm -hmm. I agree with you whole, wholeheartedly that um, as, as emissaries of the Most High, right, you're to be an example of daily life not a superiority thereof. Right. I say this often here too, that we miss that it says we're supposed to serve the nations. But none of us like that word. Like I said, that's why I say it in this all the time. I say, we like to talk about it. We don't yeah. like to live it. We yep. don't like that. As soon as you say service, we have a whole nother lit. It was, well, then I'll do this. Da, da, da. And like you said, there isn't going to be it's you're not doing this to be better than you're right. doing this. Actually, it's upside down. I mentioned this in mm -hmm. a, another series where it's an upside down piece. How did Jesus serve when he was there and ask this question and on on his penultimate night? Mm. His choice is not to lay down some deep speech. It's right. not to give them a, a gung ho rally deal. It's not let's do the rally cry and whoop whoop. No. He breaks out a bowl mm -hmm. and starts washing feet. He said, this mm -hmm. is where it starts. None of us want to do that. Yeah. And and I, the Sermon on the Mount sets the tone for, I'm going to show you. And these guys, having been in that room, mm -hmm. this moment screeches back at them, loud screaming in their ears. And I think that's when they start to really, that this is one of those deals where they're, they have that look back on moment. They're looking back at themselves, looking back at themselves, right? Yeah. Um, yep. And, and, and we have that, uh, we're supposed to be different, to be an example. Like you said, not, not to be better, not to be greater, not to be yeah. 
thought of anything. It's just to be an example. This is what God wants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, our country is in the throes of political chaos right now. And I think each party wants to get in office to show the other party, see, we're right. You're wrong. And Jesus here, I love what, what they were saying, the way they were describing it, is these powerless nobodies eventually will rule with generosity. And it's like, we're not coming into power to show our power to take over, but we're, we're coming into power to bless, mm-hmm. to, to show others what God is really like. And I love that. And he ends up going into um, talking about what that kind of service, like you were saying, the way Jesus laid it out, um, literally, not only in words, but in deed, mm-hmm. of what service looks like. Um, he does talk about the peacemakers, you know, and that peacemaking is something that's a very profound calling, but not without cost. Mm-hmm. That there's something there. And, and yeah, we want to be peacemakers because we want peace, but we don't realize that it's going to cost something of us, maybe our reputation, maybe whatever, uh, mm-hmm. our lives even, mm-hmm. um, or the suffering of what that, you know, trying to do something like that, how, how it impacts us. Yeah. We don't want to talk about that part. We want to talk about you know the the, the good side the the um, the what looks good on the outside kind of thing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we're Jesus is trying to say this life is going to be incredibly amazing, but it's also not going to be easy. Mm-hmm. Well, it, what's and that's interesting because it, it's not not that it's not intended to be easy. Because I don't, God didn't give that in the garden kind of deal. I think we, we've made it to a point where it's not going to be easy for a period of time, and I'll yeah. agree. And that period yeah. of time is going to be your life mm-hmm. while, whilst you're here, right, um, for an eventual time where it will be different. Yes. But our expectation is to live that way now, right, mm-hmm. to, to try the best we know how. You know, it, it's always been that way. It's been that way from the other mountain, right? Mm-hmm. It's that, here's what you do. Do it the best you know how. And that we've seen has changed over time. Yeah. Um, I made the statement that, uh, okay, so if we think that that we're, that we've got it now, I won't even want to go into how deep that we think we have to go. <laughs> um, do we think it's better now? same looking back at this time worse Mm. yeah i'm i i'm not compelled that that argument holds much weight when you start to look at pick up a mirror and look at it It, it's almost like political rhetoric you hear them talk like it's something Mm -hmm. and you realize but that's not the picture you're you're talking about something everybody's looking around you and, and, and it's not um peacemaker um one of the things that I enjoyed in my uh, in my life was my 20 years as a pro as a soccer ref. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> and my job, a lot of the time, at least the way I viewed it, the way I took it, was peacemaking was very much a uh, a needed c- commodity there because yeah. you have uh, both sides want and and you did it. How did you do that? You did that through justice and mercy. Mm-hmm. Justice and mercy. You had to dispense justice. And in the peacemaking, you have to dispense justice and mercy. There's a cost. Usually, a lot of it was the obvious. They're hollering at the ref, right? And <laughs> and and how do you take it personally? That is it a um a personal attack or is it an emotional right. outburst? Of which mm-hmm. 99.9% of the time it's emotional outburst. It's a yes. game that's done. There are those odd occasions where, yeah, somebody does take it a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. That happened once in Somerville on a at a kids tournament, believe it. No, no, no. It was an adult tournament with some locals that some we had some locals and some out of state people that were in, and um, and one team decided that they were going to come at me and some big guy named Sergio, Serge was huge, three hundred fifty four hundred pounds, big round wow. guy, mm-hmm. and Serge put himself in between me and this guy that was coming at. And he gave him that Italian Sergio stare down Mm -hmm. and the guy backed off, but he was coming at me. Yeah. I had to run around the back of Serge, you know, (laughs) (laughs) so funny. Um, But we have these visions in our head of of what we we want to do in this. And and I agree Mm -hmm. with you. There's, there's a cost to what it is, but 
we don't like it. Hmm. We don't. We 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 honestly we 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 talk a big game, mm-hmm. but we don't. And I, and then then they wonder what the the terms you know um where they we we tell somebody pick up a Bible, and we ask them to read it. So they're doing it now, more than at any other time in history, mind you. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they're coming back at us with questions. Well, how come it says this? Then we have this stumbling theological something answer that is yeah. political song and dance. Yeah. Yeah, definitely so. Yeah. And I think the thing that we tend to do is we'll look at you know what it's going to cost yeah. and we think, I don't want to do it. But we don't look at what value it's going to bring when we do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, when you spend a lot of money, you know, uh, saw something on friends the other day, Donna was watching it and, um, Chandler was getting a ring, you know, it's like, it was an expensive ring. Um, but he knew how it made him feel and he was hoping it would make Monica feel the same way, you know, and it's that whole thing of, and that's what Jesus was talking about. Yes, yeah. there's going to be a cost there, but look at what the result is going to be on yeah. the other side. And yeah. that's the part that we don't look at is right. that result is going to be amazing for what little, yes, it's going to be painful, but again, it's, it's this long compared to this big of a yeah. result. Well, we, I'm challenged by this with, with us. So I don't, I don't, I don't know about you. So I'm going to toss this out. Is that, okay. I think at times theologically thinking, we we drive off the it's uncomfortable now so we better in heaven okay mm. and i'm not the more i read and the more studying this the more i'm compelled <clears throat> that that's not the focus it's supposed to be better now meaning we have the opportunity to improve stuff is it going to get to the ideal spot no we we we, we get that but can we be an influence individually and corporally, okay, that can make a difference and live differently and be better? And yeah. I think we can. And I think part of that's a, a mindset change and focus and where you're where you point your head at. You know, we're we're, we're very much like horses. We truly are. Mm-hmm. You and I have been on them. We already know. All I can do is point the horse to get the horse to go where you want him to go, you point his head that way. Mm-hmm. And there he goes. So I'm a cross between a horse and a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand that one all yeah. too well. <laughs> yeah. so. I would agree with you. And, and and I would say as we look at when, when Jesus was talking about here's the cost, but here's the result, I'm looking at that as in real time here and now. Yeah. You know, script Paul does talk about your reward's going to be in heaven. Yes, there's going to be those kinds of things. But mm-hmm. what Jesus is talking about is not the in heaven, you know, further down the road afterlife yeah. thing. It's the yeah. it's the here and now. Yeah. Uh, the impact that you will do, the sacrifice you will make here will impact what's happening here and yeah. now. And so yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And 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 I think that's what we tend to um to downplay is yeah. that Jesus is talking about a present time, um, present impact mm-hmm. kind of life. Yeah. And I, I think if we start to look at these things that way, then we go, what, what does that mean? And then, then we have our own um, misconceptions of things. Yeah. Um, like we, we think humble and then we, we, I, I because our cultural Stickers on those go with grovel, go with mm-hmm. squashed, go with beaten down. And then you have uh, the scriptures themselves saying that um, that's an attribute of Moses. And you go, yeah. that's not, if you were to tell somebody, describe Moses to me, right? And unless they were aware of, of some scriptural connotations, mm-hmm. humble was not going to come out of their mouths. Mm. Okay. And I think that's the way we paint the story, to be yeah. fair. I think it's us and the way we paint the story. Yeah. Because the story itself says that he was. And you go, well, what did that look like? And you said it, there's a cost. Mm. How many times 
did he literally, God said, God was frustrated with them. Yeah. I'm trying to work with them, trying to deal. They're not. How many times did he throw himself in between? Mm -hmm. How many times did Moses, God's driving the bus. He's yep. coming down and Moses yep. throws himself in front of the bus. Yeah. You know, seriously. Yep. Um, we, we have him time and time and time again do that. Yeah. Um, and he expected that, I, I think. I think it was part of Moses' own testing. But at the same time, it was his character. And God mm -hmm. was strengthening that character. And it was important, I think, for, for all of it. Um, I don't believe in setups. I don't believe that God sets us up for failure. I don't believe that he gives you something that you can't do. Yeah. No, you can't do it. So then he can say, pss, pss, see, pss. you know, I, I think that's... That is not, that is not the attribute of a just God, nor a merciful and compassionate God. That doesn't fit in that model. It doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think we, when we look at the at the Beatitudes, and we're going to continue to to go through this series, we're going to look at this thing differently because yep. if we start to look at it through this different lens, uh, I think it'll change how we want to, yeah, approach these, yeah. How we want to live, I'm hoping. That's what yeah. I wanted to change is how yeah. I live. Yeah. I think the last thing on there that I saw that um, stood out, and again, I love the way that Tim and John kind of approach it, um, is uh, when he talks about the salt of the earth, the city on a hill, um, the light, and those three. And I love, you know, because, and again, you'll see this throughout scripture, you know, things in threes where there's just, they're basically illustrating something similar, but slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved how they brought out that salt, um, salt's preserving characteristics are God's illustration of his long lasting covenant. Um, I thought that was great uh, yeah. and, and a perfect yeah. illustration of it. Um, but then he talked about, you know, the other illustrations there of, um, a city on a hill and you know a light that you don't keep covered kind of thing mm -hmm. and i it was as i was thinking about it, i thought um salt as the preservative of the covenant city as the centerpiece of the promise and light as the reflection of the way um all of those being expressions of of what this whole covenant looks like it's supposed to be yeah. um something long lasting yeah. that um is is centered on a people who were meant to be an example of mm -hmm. a light showing all of us which way we're supposed to go. Yeah. The, um, it's, I like where Jesus gets a chance to take this because I'm agreeing with you hundred percent. Um, that salt. And I, I like the, the flavor aspect. I like to mm -hmm. it adds when we're breaking bread, it's bread and salt is the normal, typical piece with that. Yeah. Um, and, and the light, they've always been supposed to be a light. That was the example. Mm -hmm. That's what's being seen. The interesting part about light is that, um, it guides you to things. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's also designed to help somebody else look too, yeah. in, in a sense. But the city on a hill, I love that because that's new. In other words, we talk about things that are like I talked about overlaying mm -hmm. um, the the second mountain, mm -hmm. the one we're talking about, Sermon on the Mount, over the Sermon on Mount Sinai. Okay, right. But there wasn't at the time that Jerusalem didn't exist at the time, right. and right. it didn't even exist in David's time. Well, it did. It existed in David's time because David eventually inaugurates. Jerusalem, right. and that's where Solomon mm -hmm. decides to do this. He was in Hebron before that, right? Um, but uh, that light on a hill is like, okay, I'll bite. We'll take this. This is this is the place. I've been, I'm here, right? I've been here. This is the place, and I, I decided to call this my city. Mm -hmm. God made that call a long time ago, yep. and he's not changing it. He didn't go and say, well, you know, you've got this place so messed up, and you got that, that we're just going to scooch this down to Jaffa, you know, and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll be cool there. We're by the beach. We got the water. We got it's a comfortable place. We can do this. <laughs> um, no, he says, this is the city. You're the people you are supposed to be. I'm re-reminding you of that. 
and I want you to people to look at you and be. Um, and I remember that the light, the light's not supposed to blind people, right? This is mm -mm. we're not we're not the FBI shining something in your right. eye where you don't move, right? We're 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 a lamp. It's mm -hmm. not it's not a, a torch. I call them torches because I the British side I call them torches. It's not a flashlight. Oh. It's a lamp. Mm -hmm. That lamp into my feet, a light into my path. It's lamps. We 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 think torches. We we think mm -hmm. flashlights, right? And mm -hmm. uh, we have to think the 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 other way. How would you, uh, we talk about epitaphs? And mm -hmm. I wonder if the epitaphs that people would have would have attributes would mine have attributes would mm. people remind remember me and talk about me with these words beatitude words right yeah um rather than um you know energetic joyful daddy yada, yada, yada all those mm -hmm. those are those are words they are mm -hmm. and they're not necessarily bad but like you said which do i want to live by which is more important to me yeah. uh and that's a that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. And uh, and to be fair, if one has a reputation as such, then it's going to take a bit to change. Um, and I know guys like Paul spent their whole life um, living through decisions and choices and, and yeah. things that, that, that he had a tough one with. Yeah. And I... And so um, we're no different, you know, um, not a lot of, he made it clear with his um, disciple choices that he, he wasn't going for the, for the, the famous guy. I won't even say cream of the crop because I agree with you, Jimmy, that that's a better word to say more. He's, they're not nobodies. They were anybody's. They were everybody's. Yeah. They were more a demographic of their, all of us. Not none right. of us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use that. I like that. See, look at that. I'm that that's a, I, I like that a lot. Well, and, yeah. and <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> um, I loved again, the visualization that they did in the series where they went back and forth with the, um, the more realistic looking images versus yeah. the cartoonish more yeah talking about the inner life and the intentions, you know, when they showed the one um, religious leader, you know, in the heart that was empty uh, yeah. and, you know, realizing, Hey, I, I don't have the heart that yeah. they're talking about. Yeah. And, and that's what God's always been about. It's been about what's going on inside. Not what does it look yeah. like on the outside, but yeah. what's going on on the inside. And he looked at those disciples and he said, I know what's going on on the inside with these guys. And, and these are the guys that are going to do what needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's going to be fun to watch as these episodes mm -hmm. play out. And yep. uh, you're right. Maybe we should, the part we should be focusing on most are those little neon inside the mm -hmm. heart deals. The outsides yeah. are, are there, but mm -hmm. what's the what's the attitude? Because the attitude in that glowing little creature, right? In the, the glowing thing on the inside will always display itself, though. Yeah. It'll always display yeah. itself. Um, people can say, well, I have a heart for, I have a heart of, and I go, hmm. does that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I don't think you mean what you think, what you think. It mean. I, <laughs> exactly. I used inconceivable. You'll, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I played the, the snip. So nice. um, from v Vinzini's inconceivable. Mm -hmm. I don't think you think it means... <laughs> What you think it what means, think it and, means. Nope. and, and uh, I, I said that in relation to us being able to live God's ways. Yeah, and uh, we've been told it's hard, it's impossible, it's inconceivable. Don't even think about it. And I'm mm. and uh, I'm I'm much more um, on the way of people keep saying inconceivable, impossible, blah, 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 and I I don't think you think it means what you yeah. think it means. So no, definitely um, not. Anything else? No, nope, that was a good one. I, I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the rest of them. Yeah, there's um there's other clips and they'll play them out doing those. And maybe we should throw another episode in where we can talk about some of the things because they have other little video snippets that come through right. here too. And the more I saw those on, on part one, I did address one on my chiastic um, 
the chiastic conversation. Right. They were talking about this in the structure of of the threes and the threes in in, in the threes. Mm-hmm. And I had a there's a triangle deal that kind of laid out how this chiastic structure works. So they have these other side studies in there that I think are worthwhile yeah. to take a peek at that are that, that are fun. Definitely, too. everybody, please. I'm not I'm not plugging the Bible Project app. I'm merely saying that if you want to see these. They're, they debut every every five weeks. They'll tell you when. They'll be on YouTube. I feel for the for the the main vid, but mm-hmm. underneath and all the other videos, they're all on the Bible Project app. So yeah. link in the description to the Bible Project webpage, and then to get the app. So I'll get the app, and then the reading plans are there. There's so much that gets in to mm-hmm. to to read to look at these things again. Like I said, slow down. Yeah. And look at them again. And maybe, like Jimmy and I were talking about, maybe look at it with a different set of eyes, a set of, of fresh eyes. Um, because I, I think I think it's worth it. You yeah. Know, as as we do this. So um Jimmy, as always, um, thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing your time. Um, because I'm really, really excited about getting to follow this series with you. This is going to continue to be a ton of fun, right? Lots of there's, fun. There's lots more things that they're going to come to mind. I, I suspect, and and it's going to be nice to be able to, to delve in again and and see this Im- impactful series of teachings, and like you said, let us be affected by it. Yeah. Yep. So thanks to everyone for being w- with us tonight on this episode, on another episode of the Sermon on the Mount, on the dusty feet. Thank you.